You'll never even know. Surveillance is a growing fact of life these days, but I now believe we've expanded the scope of human sight to dangerous levels. I'm not a master hacker by any means, but I was able to Google a script to break into my neighbor's new smart home system. Believe me when I say that ignorance is bliss and that you can never go back once you know the truth. I'm not some creep. The idea first started as a random thought when I heard my 50-something neighbor bragging to someone else on his porch about his new smart home system. He claimed the security system and all the devices in his house were wired to the same voice command box, and he sounded rather proud of it. He claimed it was perfect security. Of course, after overhearing a claim like that floating in through my open window, I made a single search and found a dozen hits for scripts that would break into the brand he described. I laughed to myself and then left it at that. But temptation has a funny way of lurking in the back of your mind. Every few days the thought would randomly pop into my head, I had the power. Why not take a peek? It would be good for a laugh if nothing else. It's not like he would have installed cameras in his bathrooms or anything. Nah. No. Hey, maybe, no, I shouldn't. But then spring break arrived, and, while sitting at my computer, I happened to glance out the window and see the neighbor's daughter coming home from college. The temptation to use the script had already been percolating in me for weeks. The veins in my extremities constricted painfully as I realized I was going to do it. During my brief glimpse down into their yard, I'd seen what looked like a startlingly attractive girl, and I couldn't connect that image to the weird girl next door I'd last seen in high school. It wasn't a creeper thing. I just wanted a better look to understand what I'd seen. I told myself I'd take one quick look and then be done with it. While loading up the script, I promised myself I'd delete it right after. Yeah, that was the right thing to do. No harm was done, and if I got caught somehow, I could just claim it was a one-time accident. That sounded reasonable. A black window scrolled text down my screen rapidly for six seconds, and then, I was in. Nerves thrilling, I watched breathlessly through a security cam feed in the living room as the girl came in, greeted her brother and father, and then headed upstairs. It was the same girl I remembered, and she'd gotten absurdly pretty in the last year somehow. After settling into certainty, I closed the feed, deleted the script, and then spent a paranoid hour clearing my computer of any evidence of what I'd done. For maybe a week I sat at home terrified that the police would break down my door and take me at any moment, but that's the funny thing about temptation. When no consequences followed, the urge to look began eating away at me again. I had a few drinks one lonely night and then went for it before I could change my mind. The son was watching television in the living room. I couldn't see what he was watching from the angle of the camera in the living room, but he seemed zoned out. My neighbor himself was sitting in the kitchen working on his laptop. Again, I couldn't see what he was doing from my angle, but he was certainly downing coffee as he worked. My pulse quickened as a hallway feed caught the daughter going from her room to the bathroom and just a towel to take a shower. Okay, borderline creeps, I told myself, but it's not like I could see in the bathrooms or the bedrooms, right? Just to confirm that I couldn't, I tried the various devices around the house that the neighbor had connected to his system. Most were named with random numbers and letters, but I did find that household devices had many more sensors than we gave them credit for. A microwave in the kitchen had some sort of crude light sensor, and the system sent me its data as an incredibly blurry video feed. A big blob of darkness moved in place in front of a bright rectangle of light, and I realized I was looking at my neighbor on his laptop from a different angle. Many devices in the house had crude light sensors or audio pickups, and I could hear the shower running upstairs on one while listening to the sun show on another. This was all proceeding as one might expect, and I might have gone down a very dark path if I hadn't stumbled upon the unthinkable. One of the devices with a very long and very random name showed me a blurry feed somewhere unrecognizable. I switched back and forth comparing the patterns of light from the cameras, but this device seemed to be looking out somewhere altogether different. Was it the basement? It was darker than the others, but not too dark to obscure strange gray blurs moving on black. I kept switching until I found a security camera near a basement window. It was the only one down there, but it showed enough that I could compare blurs. It was less than the objects were moving and more that the fuzzy sensor made the objects appear to move simply because it was so bad, but I pinpointed a poster, a chair, and a mirror before coming to an impasse with the final blur. This one I could only see this one on the sensor. There was nothing on the video feed. Peering closer and closer, I tried to make sense of the blob of gray and white pixels as it moved around the basement. There, and there, recognizable landmarks among the junk, but no sign of it on the high-res camera. What was I seeing? Was the sensor just defective? What device was it even part of? I managed to narrow it down to a forgotten digital clock that must have been running on batteries, but nothing about this made sense. I looked up a script to sharpen video data and I let everything run all night. In the morning, I pulled myself up, got a coffee, sat down at my computer, and then froze. Repeatedly, I played the confusing horror the script had produced. The blur of gray and shadows had become coherent, but not in any natural way. Instead, it appeared that I was looking at an androgynous gray humanoid form with a pillowcase over her head. Since this was just a graphical best guess, her glitchy movement brought out severe unease and disgust in me as I watched her jerkily walk around the basement. She appeared to be able to navigate despite the pillowcase covering her face, and she even made it up a few steps toward the basement door before her random movements took her back down. What the hell was I seeing? For two days I watched the thing stumble around my neighbor's basement before she finally went all the way up the stairs. It was four in the morning and all the three of them were asleep. This time, she seemed to move with purpose. She was still not visible on any high-resolution camera, but I tracked her from the sensor to the sensor by her twitching blur. After so long watching her unfocused form, I was beginning to get a sense of where her legs and arms were by the movement and patterns of the gray. Each limb moved as if on different conflicting joints. When she walked, it was as if her ankles, knees, and thighs each wanted to go in opposite directions, and the conflict was only resolved by odd rotations and strange body angles. Gripped by terror, I watched her slowly ratchet her way through the kitchen and toward the second set of stairs. There was no doubt in my mind that she was heading for the bedrooms. My knuckles went white as I gripped the edge of my table. Finally, as she clambered up and out of sight of the sensors, I panicked. She still wasn't visible on the hallway camera, but I knew I had to do something. But what? If I called the house, they would have my phone number, and they would start asking questions as to why I called at 4 in the morning. 
There was no way I could pretend it was random. The only reason I even had my neighbor's cell phone number was that I'd heard him say it out loud the week before on one of my feeds. What could I do? Desperate to act, or to at least see what was happening, I left my computer and crept to a window in another room. From here, I could see into my neighbor's daughter's window, and my entire body ran with prickly terror as I spied a strange gray anti-glow in her room. The sharpening script had not been wrong, it had merely been inadequate. My eyes still interpreted the inexplicable entity as an androgynous humanoid with a pillowcase over its head, but it moved through the space of the girl's room like a depressed carving etched into reality itself. I could feel why it didn't show up on cameras. It was something otherworldly, something not entirely there, or something visible only as an artifact of organic human perception. This was a creature outside the realm of human knowledge and observation, and I guessed that it was making its move now only because it believed itself to be unseen. It jerked and twitched forward to lean over the neighbor's daughter as she slept. Quickly and quietly, I slid open my window, removed the screen, and threw a quarter at the glass panes opposite. I ducked down immediately after and clutched the floor in abject terror. The rap noise had been excruciatingly loud. Had the entity snapped its pillowcase covered head toward the sound? Had it seen me? I had no way of knowing. Or did I? Crawling back to my room, I checked the feeds. Completely unperturbed by my noise, the entity had begun ratcheting her way back down the stairs. It was not fleeing to the basement. I watched as it approached the small table by the front door and began going through the mail stack there. It carefully picked out one envelope and crumpled it into oblivion in a blurry gray hand. Then, it moved to the kitchen, where it touched the keyboard on my neighbor's laptop repeatedly for nearly a minute. What was it doing? It returned to the basement to move in lurking circles, and I sat and stared at it half awake until a shout from both my computer and my open window jolted me to full awareness. It had been my neighbor in his kitchen, he'd yelled loud enough for me to hear it for real. Stalking back and forth while talking on the phone, he was insisting he hadn't sent any compromising emails. He'd been fired from his job. In the front hall, his son was busy looking through the pile of mail. He asked his sister and father repeatedly if any college acceptance letters had come in, but his father was too busy arguing on the phone, and his sister hadn't seen any. But I had. What type of entity were we dealing with here? It hadn't physically harmed anyone, but it was still lurking in their home every hour of every day, and it had made invisible moves against them by sabotaging my neighbor's job and his son's college career. At long last, my neighbor seemed to convince the other end that his account had been hacked, but he was somber and concerned about how it would reflect on him at work. The son continued with his day, oblivious to the fact that his acceptance letter had come in, and been destroyed. It was then that I began to think about the timeline of what had happened. I'd resisted the urge to spy on my neighbor's family for weeks. Indeed, beyond that, he'd lived there for years. If the entity had been in his basement this entire time, then perhaps they were not physically at risk. There'd been plenty of opportunities to hurt them directly. No, this was something else. This was a specter of misfortune, a curse, an information parasite. But my neighbor had not been particularly unlucky as far as I knew, not until... Not until he'd gotten the surveillance system. A bunch of little complaints I'd heard him make suddenly began to add up. Things had been inexplicably going wrong for everyone in his family recently. Alarm clocks had been failing to go off at the proper time, emails and texts had been a bit weird, and each of the three members of his household had a general growing frustration with life. It was undermining them. It was lurking in the basement, looking out of sight, and sabotaging them, and they had no idea. But where had the entity come from? Almost all of the devices and cameras had been there before. The only difference was that they had been integrated. Did observation affect the physical universe? I was no quantum physics expert, but I knew that observation was a crucial part of existence. Did overlapping connected layers of observation somehow enable this entity to slide into our world? When you put all the pieces together, did the whole add up to more than the sum of the parts? I began thinking up a plan of action that involved sneaking over there and turning off all their devices in the hopes of banishing the entity in their basement. But, as I did so, I looked down into the left of my cell phone. It sat quietly glowing on the table, for I had moved my hand above it and activated its motion sensor. Then, I looked up and noticed the webcam above my monitor that I always kept pointed at myself. Then, I looked to my right at my television, itself containing a sensor, and the gaming console beside it that also had sensors to detect my motion. Microphones. Cameras. Everywhere. I'd applied for so many internships last summer and gotten none. I'd missed dates and lost budding relationships because of texting troubles. Everything had felt hard lately, thus why I was sitting alone at my computer most nights. I sat without breathing for nearly 20 seconds. There would be no plan. There would be no action taken. My neighbors would have to fend for themselves. I let out my breath, put my hands back on my mouse and keyboard, and loaded up a computer game. It would look like I'd given up, to anyone watching. 